Hello, everyone. My name is Zach, and this is Science Explosion at Hudson Public Library in Hudson, Iowa. All right, so we're going to be doing a bit of an experiment today with some simple ingredients that you uh, might have in your kitchen. So we're going to be talking about acidity and citrus fruits. All right, so what you're going to need is three jars or glasses or some sort of container, just as long as they're all the same size. You're gonna need some baking soda. Remember that's sodium bicarbonate. You're gonna need something to measure with. I've got a half a tablespoon here. You're gonna need something uh, to measure liquid with. And that I've got one of these things here. If you don't have one of that, just feel free to use a, uh, I'm going to measure it, I believe, to a half a teaspoon. Uh, so if you have a half teaspoon, that'll work too. So the amount that you're using for this isn't what's important. It's that it's going to be the same for all three. All right. And I think I'm also going to need three bowls. I did not grab that out before, but I can do that now. Three bowls. You're going to need a marker and then you are going to need three different citrus fruits of different types. So I've got an orange, a lemon, and a lime here. All right, so we are going to see how these work here by cutting them open. So you're also going to need a knife. I've got just a child safety knife here. If you happen to have one of those, that will work just fine. All right, so first off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our baking soda. So we're gonna put a half a tablespoon into each of these jars. There we go, struggling to get it out for just a bit there. So that one's got it. Next one's got it. So make sure you get it level so they're all the same. There we go. This is why I keep my baking soda in this bag, because I know I'll spill it. You can see how much is in the bottom of the bag right there. <laughs> so then we can still use that amount. All right, so now what you're going to do is slice each of the fruits open and then squeeze some juice. Mm, that smells really good. Into each of the containers. All right. So we'll just make sure this is all ready and keep it by each of the things so you can see i've got the jar this container and the orange right here so this is the orange line next up let's get the lemon put it in that one and squeeze it as well Ooh. you know i could have color coded these bowls too that would have been a great idea there. And then last but not least, we'll do the lime. So I've got an orange lemon and lime, but if you have a grapefruit or uh, let's see, citron or what is it? a Buddha's hand, whatever kind of <laughs> citrus fruit you happen to have, I just picked these because I figured they're the most likely ones that they have. Squeeze each one. Ooh, this lime is a lot firmer. 
it's going to take a little more effort to get that much juice out of it. So I'm just squeezing these all by hand. But if you happen to have a juicer, that'll work as well. I bet I'm going to wish I had a juicer for this lot. Squeeze that out into there. Try to just get the juice, not the pulp. Not nearly as much juice in this line. So use your critical thinking skills. Why do you think that is? Okay, we'll be able to tell if we don't have enough juice on that. Give me just a second here. I gotta rinse my hands off. All right, so now we've got this all set up. So we are testing the acidity of these different citrus fruits here with the baking soda. So one way you could test the acidity of these is by tasting them, but you know, I think this is be, gonna be a lot more sciencey and fun way to do it. All right, so let's talk a little bit about citrus things. So the acidity of this, if you've watched some of the other videos where I talked about acidity, you know that acidity uh, has to do with the pH. But even more simply than that, if something's acidic, it's going to taste sour. So you might already be thinking to yourself about which one of these is going to seem more acidic than the others. So you've probably got your hypothesis ready, or you're at least starting to think about it, of what it will be. But let's talk about why are these fruits sour to begin with? So that's a really great question. So all citrus fruits have something in them called citric acid. Some just have more of it than others. So what is citric acid? Well, you might actually be surprised to know citric acid isn't just in citrus fruits. It's actually in quite a bit of different foods. There's just a lot of it in citrus fruits. That's why we call it citric acid. Well, so it's actually something that's pretty good for the body. We uh, use it for a lot of different things, but you're going to see a lot of debate on that online. By the way, if you look up uh, citric acid, there's a lot of people telling you to try to cut it out for different diets, things like that. Uh, so I'm not going to get too much into that, but just know it's a common thing in food, but there's a lot of it in these, which is what makes them uh, so uh, sour, some of these. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, Zach, I have an orange and an orange isn't really sour. And that's a great point, but I have to uh, let you know. So an orange you'll probably notice already, just a typical sweet navel orange like this one that you could get at a grocery store actually is going to be quite a bit more sour than a lot of other fruits that you get at a grocery store, say like blueberries or strawberries or something like that. But it's also really good to know that that's not the only kind of oranges. There are a lot of bitter and sour oranges that are really popular around the world. All right, so one other interesting little fact that I found out is that where lemons came from. So uh, apparently uh, citrus fruits only have a few uh, ancestors of their relatives. And one of those was a citron. And if you haven't seen a citron, basically imagine a lemon and then make it look a lot more like kind of an old person. It's got a really thick skin on it and it's really, really wrinkly looking. And that's what a citron looks like. So basically uh, to get a lemon, they uh, crossed a bitter orange with a citron and they got a lemon. Alrighty, so we've got uh, the citric acid in these. So you might also know about vitamin C. So there's a lot of vitamin C in citrus fruits. That's actually one of the things they're famous for. What you might not know is why vitamin C gets talked about so much. So there's a few different things for vitamin C, but one of the biggest things is if you don't have vitamin C, you're going to get a really, really not fun disease called scurvy. 
So scurvy makes me think of pirates, just like our school mascot here in Hudson. But scurvy was something people actually did used to get, and it was bad. So if you don't get enough vitamin C, and don't worry, most people in America, we're not going to have any problem. You don't need much vitamin C to not get scurvy. So don't get scared about this. But if you don't get any vitamin C for months and months, then like say if you're going on a long boat trip like the pirates were, then you could get scurvy. And scurvy is basically going to do a number of things to you, but it's really going to affect your teeth. Your teeth are going to fall out. Your gums are basically going to rot. It's not fun. So that is why a lot of sailors, they even used to call them limeys because they'd have limes. But the funny thing is there's not nearly as much vitamin C in limes as there are in lemons. But they eventually figured out that having just a few lemons on a ship would actually help them to stop getting scurvy. There's vitamin C in quite a bit of things, by the way. A lot of plants have vitamin C in them. You're not going to get much vitamin C from meat, um, interestingly enough, unless you're eating. Does anybody know what part of an animal has a lot of vitamin C in it? Does anybody know? I'll be impressed if anybody does, by the way. So the answer is a liver. So a liver actually contains a lot of vitamin C. The liver is by far the healthiest cut of meat. So uh, if you are, so ironically enough, some of the uh, sailors who were really low in the ranks, the people who would be having to swab the deck and stuff like that, they would get, if they had meat on the ship, they would end up getting the liver because it was considered the poor cut. And then the officers would get a steak and the officers who had a steak would get scurvy and the people who were lower didn't because they ended up getting a little bit of vitamin C from the liver. So just something I find interesting. All right. But anyway, enough talking about that. Let's see what actually happens with our experiment. So we're going to add, I'll flatten that out a little bit, our, I'm going to get my marker ready too. We're going to add our liquid in here. So I'll measure this out. Let's go. See, I like this one because it really helps me to be accurate on it. So I've got a half a teaspoon in here. And then let's add it to this first one. So this is an orange. Let's see how much this reacts. Let's do it all at once. And there we go. A little bit of fizzing in there. Then I'm going to rinse this off. Now it's, yeah, there we go. So there's a little bit of fizz. By the way, if you do more of this, you're gonna see a lot more fizzing. So actually, while that hasn't reacted too much, let's go a little bit more. I think we can go maybe a whole teaspoon. So I'll add another half teaspoon in while that's still fizzing. There we go. We got a little bit more fizz in there. So keep in mind, I divided that out into two, so I kind of messed that up a little bit, but I think it still works. Let's rinse that out. Now let's try the lemon. I think we'll need a little more juice. Let's do one teaspoon of lemon juice. Perfect. Got exactly one teaspoon there all right so let's put this in and see so the marker by the way i'm gonna mark how high it goes the fizz when it's at its highest not terribly high with that one let's see this one all right so that was much more So since I messed this one up the first time, let's give it another chance, should we? I think so. All right, so 
Why is this fizzing? If you worked with baking soda and vinegar before, you probably know the answer. And that is because we're reacting an acid with a base. So the sodium bicarbonate is a base. And then these are different acids. So let's give the orange another shot because I realized that was not nearly enough to get one that looks nice on the video here. All right, so let's try that with the orange. There we go, that's funny. And let's give it a, a whole teaspoon. All right, so there you can see, it still didn't fizz very much. Look at the differences between how high that went. This is the orange went up to that line, and this is the lemon went up to that line. So what do you think the lime will do? So will the lime be the most, the least, somewhere in between? Let's find out. I think we're gonna need a little more juice. There we go. So by the way, if you're wondering where the acidity comes from in these things, I know I talked just a little bit about that before. Let me wash this out. So it's contained in a structure inside these called the vacuoles. And basically what you need to know about vacuoles is it's sort of like a little capsule of things. And that's where all this citric acid is being kept in this. Now, there are lots of scientists that are actually trying to figure out why exactly there's so much citric acid in some citrus fruits. And it's a really good question. Now, there's one group that actually thinks it has to do with color changing they found out that in a relative of these citrus fruits, uh, it was petunias, I believe. Yeah, so petunias, they found out that different levels of citric acid actually changed the color of the flowers. So they think it might have something to do with that, but there's a few different reasons. By the way, how much sugar you think is in this lemon? So we focus on how sour these things are a lot, but we don't really talk about how sweet they are. So there's actually quite a bit of sugar in a lemon, just like there is in an orange. A lemon is about as sweet as an orange is. There's quite a bit of sugar. The reason you don't notice it is because it's so sour. So this lemon, um, an equal weight of lemon has more sugar in it than a strawberry does. Strawberries actually have very little sugar. All right, so is there a way you can taste a lemon sweetness without tasting its sourness? There actually is. So first of all, you could just have um, some type of, uh, some people just don't taste sour things as much, but there's a way for everybody to get this. So I will tell you, it's called a miracle berry. And you can either find the berries or you can find little tablets and you can find these easily online. But, uh, and I have not tried them myself, I've been meaning to for a while, but if you were to eat one of those and then eat a lemon, you would be able to taste the sweetness of a lemon, but without the sour. By the way, these things change the way a lot of things taste. They also make it so you don't really taste heat in things as well. They make a lot of things taste very different. It's really interesting. All right, so last up, we've got the lime. Let's get a whole teaspoon. I think I got a teaspoon here. I did get enough lime juice. Wonderful. There we go. All right, let's see how much this one fizzes. All right. It is... So I'm marking it where the bubbles stop. There, so here we've got our finals. So I will show you this. I'm gonna mark where that first one went here. So let's see. Here's an orange, went up to there with fizz. Here's a lemon, went up to there with fizz. And here's a lime, 
went up to there with this. So when you remember that the baking soda, the sodium bicarbonate, is a base and it's going to react when you put acids in it, what does that tell you about how acidic these different fruits are? Well, we can look at the orange. It only went that high. It looks like it's not very acidic at all. Whereas the lemon and the lime went really high. So you would say, well, the lemon and the lime both look really acidic. And from this, as long as we didn't mess anything up, and it could have reacted just a little bit differently by how quickly we put them in. So I try it a couple different times if you really want a good measurement. So that's a big part of what science is about is repeating your experiments and getting other people to repeat them to see if it gives you the same results. But we can see these ones look like they're a lot more acidic than the orange. So if acidic acidity equals sourness, then what that tells us is that a lemon and a lime should taste a lot more sour than an orange. And if I were to taste this, that's exactly what would happen. Now remember, this is a safe level of acidity. Some things are so acidic that they're actually unsafe to have. Now that's not gonna be the case with any foods that you have, but think about something like a battery is incredibly acidic and that's very unsafe to eat. But these are still safe levels of acidity, even if a lemon is very sour. So something else that's interesting about how acidic these are, and this could have another reason to do with why they've got this, is that strong acids, um, and especially with lemon juice, I know, they are antiseptic. So this lemon actually uh, kills some microorganisms. Um, and this juice from the lemon. That's why actually lemons have been used in cleaning in a lot of different ways. That's why a lot of cleaning products smell like lemons is because a lot of cleaning products used to be made out of lemon juice. And lemons just smell really nice. Citrus is a good smell that people just like to smell. All right, so that's it for Science Explosion. It's a pretty simple one that we've got right here. If you wanna look into this more, you could try this experiment with juice from other things. Do you think juice from an apple would make it fizzle very much? Well, you could try it and find out. So my name is Zach. This is Hudson Public Library Science Explosion. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye.